I'm so sick of seeing these. It's like everywhere I look, I see these, uh, concubine relationships. <laughs> And like the glory that people give it when it's really quite degrading and demeaning. It's like you're the same as everyone else. It's like, Like, that can't be a good feeling. And I don't even think people just realize it. Or maybe they don't care. Like, I want to be somebody's only one. You know what I'm saying? I want to be the only person they think about in a romantic way throughout their day. Every day, right? I want to be the only one that has that person's attention. Why? Because I hold something of value. I hold plenty of things of value that they can't just get willy-nilly from everyone else it seems to me like people are in these I call them concubine relationships okay polyamorous whatever you want to call it to me what I see from it it's just one pimp with a whole bunch of hoes excuse my terminology but that's what it is And they give praise to it. It's literally having other people under your submission, making them think that they're in a special type of situation with a whole bunch of different people, all following the lead of one person, doing what one person says. They only have to live in the same state, right? I see it on Facebook all the time. They'll be working out, right? Making a video, working out. And then they put all four so-and-so, right? It'll be like 12, diff 12 of them, all for this one person. Because we're all in a polyamorous relationship. Yeah, we're open. Yeah, we're, we're, uh, yeah, y'all are open, all right. We're, um, and, 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 you know. Hey, if that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do, right? I'm not up here to, uh, say that what I want is better than what you want, right? Or prefer. That's not what I'm up here to say, right? I'm just up here to shed some light just in case you don't see it, right? Right? Do you realize that's another way of saying without saying it that you're not insignificant right that you're not special right everybody's special in their own right right but it just gives the depiction of nothing's ever enough right no one's ever enough so I just have to keep adding people to this team that I've been accumulating, been building. Who does all your attention go to? Like, I would rather have one person having their attention focused on me than having to share that attention with 12 other people. I don't know. It just don't make sense to me. It never made sense to me. Not even in the Bible. It didn't make sense to me. I don't know. But, um, well, <laughs> that's something different. Okay, yeah, let me not compare that to this because that's something different. Um, but with similarities. But anyway. I would never want that to be my life. Like, how can you have any type of contentment? Comfortability in the relationship. Trust. Trust. How can you have any trust in that type of a relationship? Yeah, they say they're all open and trustworthy with each other and all this and that. But how? When your relationship is open. 
meaning all of you have sex with who you want. You do with what you want, with who you want. Plus the ones that are all in this concubine group. Swapping energies with each other, swapping energies with the public and people out and about. Swapping other things. Clutter. See, see how I was just. It's it's clutter. It's like a mess. People don't know how special having a true person really is. Why? Because they've never ex experienced that before. They've never experienced real true love before so they feel like they can build love like build a bear right could take pieces of this person and this person and this person and this person let's combine it all together and still not satisfied still it's never enough still adding people to this team so to speak It's just like a ball of confusion, right? It's like there's 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 a way that seems right to a man, but that way leads into death. Like, and not I'm not talking about physical death, right? It's it's just spiritual death. Where does your growth? Where, where does the growth come from? Where where does it come in? Where is it allowed to to permeate and grow? How do you do that when you're connected to so many different people in all of those ways I described? You can't. Where's, where, where, where are you going to have time to grow? Where are you going to have the room to grow? The separation to grow? The one-on-one -on -one relationship in order to grow? It's, it's not there, right? It's, it's empty. It's vacant of the things that are actually beneficial to you and your health, to you and your mental health, to you and your mental stimulation, stimulation, right? Mm -hmm. And I can speak on that because... I've tried it out before, of course. Why would I be speaking on something I know nothing about? <laughs> right? I've tried it out before for about a week. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> it made me feel all of the things I did not want to feel. Mm -mm. And jealousy was in there. And I know if I start to feel jealous, I, I don't need to be in it. I don't need to be near it. I don't need to be. You feel me? So, uh, like I said, I ain't on here to tell nobody what to do at all. I'm just voicing what's obvious to me that may not be obvious to others. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so don't get mad at me. You know, do do what you do what you do. Right, I'm just I'm just throwing this insight out there, right? Just in case you never thought about it, right? Um, but yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, those of you who know the value of love, who respect love, right? What it what it gives, what it produces, the capabilities the impossibilities you're about to have that why because you've been making yourself ready for that so you're about to have that okay all right and a lot of people go through life and they give up on love because of the things that they've been through dealing with love right but they need to change their perspective because 
if you look at it in the way that you've always looked at it, yeah, you are going to give up on love. Absolutely you are, right? I've thought that before, 10, 10 on my timer. But if you change your perspective and you know that the relationships that come into your life are to teach you, they're to teach you. Why? To prepare you, to make you ready. Are we not readying ourselves for 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 the bridegroom to return? Yeah. So it's the same thing. You're being made ready for a union. An actual, loving, caring, kind, thoughtful, selfless union. Two intellectual minds that meet. Two spiritual minds that meet. That are on the same frequency. That are on the same level. That is to be cherished. Because that doesn't come every day. And then in this generation, it really doesn't come. It's very fleeting. Very fleeting. It means it's here today, gone tomorrow. People don't operate in love. Most people don't operate in love anymore. Right? It's all logic. It's all what makes sense. We operate in what doesn't make sense. To the natural man. A lot of the things that God asks us to do. Or commands us to do. Does it make sense? Not to our natural human eyes. No, they do not. Our human understanding. Mm -mm. That's why obedience is better than sacrifice. Right? God may actually do something that you have. You absolutely, with your human logic, cannot see how what God is asking you to do is going to benefit you. But as soon as you do it on the other side of that obedience, oh, Oh, the benefits. Oh, the benefits. The celebration, the joy, the happiness. Genuine happiness. I love when the Lord asks me to do something now. I love it. Take the leap of faith. Okay. All right. Sign still delivered. I'm yours. <laughs> yes, Lord. I'm about to take this leap because I know that you have something amazing for me on the other side no i'm not doing it for the prize not at all i'm doing it because my father asked me to right what's on the other side is just a cherry on top because whether there whether there was something on the other side or not that would benefit me i would still do it why because my father asked me to because my father commanded me to right so we need to hear that, okay? Um, yeah, it's something. It's something special about a personal relationship. It just is. It is something that nobody else can touch. Nobody else can understand. Why? Because it's between two people. That is priceless. Priceless. I've yearned to have that since a child. And I know if I've yearned to have that since a child, what child thinks about that? You know? Then I know that it's priceless. And I know that it's for me. <laughs> Which is why I won't settle for anything less. You know what I'm saying? I will not settle for anything less. Not a grain of sand less. But what I know I deserve. And the same is with you. You are not going to settle for anything less than what you know you deserve. And more, even higher, what God knows that you deserve. Right? All right. So. Don't sell yourself short. Don't settle. But strive. Strive for the things that you want. Strive to be who you know that you were meant to be. Strive to 
overcome challenges strive no matter what you do strive strive keep reaching upward and onward never reach backwards unless you are pulling somebody up out of the pit okay most times you won't have to reach backwards because when you it's time for you the divine timing when it's time for you to meet those people on that person or whatever to help pull them out of that pit if they want your help they will take it if they do not they will stay there and your job is to keep moving what did dory uh what is her name is it dory or dora dory finding nemo what did dory say just keep swimming <laughs> just keep swimming you feel me so keep swimming y'all all right peace <laughs>